all right so we have the progress bar custom element from the previous video we use the custom elements api to create and register it on the web page but there are still some things missing from this component we want the component to behave the same way every time we inject it in our project but as of now global styles or global javascript can easily manipulate this component let me give you an example we have some styles here for our custom component but what if i add conflicting styles in the global scope so let's add a background color to the total progress div which is the outer div in the global style sheet now if i go back to the browser you'll see that it does change the color which means that it can override the css that we have for our component the styles can also spill out from the component as well if i create a button inside the html and i attach the same class that i have for both of my buttons in the component so the class name is btn and let me just give it a name hello world if i save this and go back to my browser you'll see that this new button that we have created picks up the styles from the custom element now what we want is for this component to be unaffected by external elements so we somehow need to isolate everything related to this component in a separate block for this we'll make use of the shadow dom now shadow dom will have its own secret dom tree that cannot be accidentally accessed by the main dom tree html elements like the video tag or certain input tags make use of the shadow dom to abstract away certain ui elements i have created a separate video explaining the core concepts related to shadow dom do check it out now let's add the shadow dom to our project before going into shadow dom there are actually a few things that i missed out in the last video let's quickly look at them inside the disconnected callback hook the way we are removing the event listeners is actually not the correct way we are actually using two different functions inside the connected callback and the disconnected callback because both of these functions are anonymous so it's not really solving the memory leak problem what we'll instead do is create a separate function and then pass it as a reference i'll just copy the contents of this function and paste it inside a separate function let's call it handle progress let's also do this for the second event listener so handle color i'll save this and now instead of using anonymous functions i can simply refer to these functions now if i go back to the browser and try to increase the progress or change the color you'll see that both of these functionalities do not work that is because when i'm trying to access the this keyword inside these functions it's set to the button element and i want it to be set to the progress bar because these attributes that we are trying to change the color attribute and the value attribute both of these attributes belong to the progress bar element the host element and currently the value of this when the function gets invoked is set to the button element so i'll need to bind the value of this to the progress bar for both of these functions so inside the constructor i'll simply bind the progress bar instance to both of these functions so now if i go back and try to increase the progress it works as expected and the color change also works this actually used to be a common practice for react developers when class components used to be the norm all right the second thing that i had missed out in the previous video was that the attribute changed callback gets triggered even when an attribute is added to the element so since inside the callback we handle style changes for all the attributes it's also going to set the default values during initialization so we really don't have to set the default values inside our style block so i can simply remove all the styles that rely on the attributes so the height can be deleted this whole block actually can be deleted and the background color as well i hope this makes sense so basically when the attributes get added to the element all these blocks will be executed once and the value inside this new value argument gets picked up from the values that we provide in the html so it's basically setting the default values inside this function as well and any time an attributes value changes this callback is going to get triggered again 
all right now that we have fixed everything from the previous video let's look at the shadow dom the way the shadow dom works is you attach a shadow root to your custom element a shadow root is just like any other root node in a dom tree the only difference is that this tree is a shadow tree and it's going to be inaccessible from the main tree our custom element is the progress bar so we'll attach a shadow root to this progress bar so inside the constructor if i type this dot attach shadow it's going to attach a shadow root to this progress bar element now this method takes in an options object as an argument there's only one option which is the mode option if you set the mode to open the shadow dom will be accessible via javascript and if you set it to closed it will not be accessible yeah no shit sherlock to understand more about this do watch the shadow dom video i have explained this in detail with examples now first let me save this and if i go back inside the browser you'll see that the component has completely disappeared but inside the element section you'll see the shadow root attached to our progress bar element that means we are on the right track so since we are now dealing with the shadow tree and not the main tree we'll have to correct our references so before when i used this dot inner html we could directly access the contents of the progress bar but now there's the shadow root which acts as a wrapper for all the contents inside the progress bar you can see here the progress bar has a shadow root and our html elements are going to be part of this shadow root so this basically means that all the inner html references or even the query selector references should now move to the shadow root so instead of just writing inner html i'll simply replace this with shadow root dot inner html and wherever i have the query selector i'll simply add the shadow root now if i save this and go back to the browser you can see our element is back if i try to increase the progress it works as expected and the color change also works if you look closely when i try to increase the progress or even when i try to change the color the transition is not there anymore and even the background color that we had set for the outer div that is also missing that's because now that we have everything inside a shadow dom the global styles would not affect the inner elements so these styles that we had added in the global style sheet the transition and the background color both of these styles will not affect anything that is present inside the shadow dom all the elements inside the shadow dom are now encapsulated and yeah they won't be affected by external styles so let me just add it inside the style block i'll actually copy the whole thing and paste it here now if we go back and try to increase the progress this should work as expected now that we have encapsulated our component let's look at one more concept crucial to web components which is the html template so templates as the name suggests store html markup blocks these templates will not be rendered in the browser we access these templates and use them via javascript it's again pretty straightforward actually so our entire inner html block that we have over here can be considered as a template for our progress bar component so yeah let me just copy the whole thing and inside the html i'll create a template tag and i'll paste the whole thing inside this template tag i'll also give this template an id so that we can refer to it later so let me just call it progress bar template i'll save this and now if we go back to the browser we won't really have anything inside our shadow root because we literally just remove everything so yeah you can see that the shadow root is now empty but there will be this template that has a document fragment and if you look inside this document fragment you will find the same element here the style block and our html for the element now as i had mentioned earlier these templates will be accessed whenever needed by javascript so yeah let's do that the syntax might be a little tricky instead of using the shadow root dot inner html we'll append the template let me get the template by using get element by id i'll actually save it inside a variable and i'll append it to the shadow root instead of appending the template itself we'll create a clone of this template first so template.content.clone node 
and I'll set it to true. So I'll save this now. That's actually it when it comes to templates. You can see that the progress as well as the color changes. So yeah, everything looks good. One final aspect that we'll look at is slots. Slots bring flexibility to the component just like attributes. They allow you to define placeholders inside your template, which can be filled with markup fragments whenever you want. Our application might not have a great use case for slots, but let's try to add something anyway. So as I had mentioned, it's a placeholder inside your template. Let's say I want a title for this component and I want it to be declarative. So to do that, let's add a slot. Inside the template, at the top here, I'll simply attach an H4 element and inside this element, I'll create a slot. Let's name the slot as title. Now inside the progress bar element, I can attach the actual value for the H4 slot by referencing the name of the slot. So my progress bar element is here and I'll create a span and the value of the slot is going to be title. Now whatever value I pass inside this span tag will be used as the value for the slot inside the template. So let me just call it best progress bar and save this. If I go back, we can see the best progress bar title, which is attached to the custom element using slots. I can also set a default value for the slot. So inside the slot, I'll just attach, let's say a default string. Now, whenever there's no slot named title inside the custom element, the progress bar element here, it's going to fall back to the default value that we had set. So I'll just comment this out. And if I go back to the browser, you'll see that the default string is is what's attached here instead of the best progress bar that we had passed in inside the slot. And that should be it. These three technologies, the custom elements API, the shadow DOM and the HTML templates and slots when combined together, create an encapsulated reusable web component. This more or less covers the majority of use cases and should put you in a good position to start working with web components. In the next video, we'll look at some advanced topics and quirks that you'll observe with web components and finally we'll import this web component in a framework like react or something. Yeah, do subscribe for that and I'll see you in the next one.